Monitor lizards are a fantastic group of animals, as they include the largest lizards alive today, and their lifestyles and biology are intriguing aspects to learn about. The evolutionary history of the group is also a remarkable feature, especially when it comes to the giant extinct monitor known as Megalania. Now, monitor lizards can already get pretty huge, specifically in the case of the Komodo dragon, which is able to approach lengths of around 3 meters. But in the past, this group, which is technically known as Varanidae, has actually gotten to even larger sizes. However, the exact extent to which they grew is something of a debate, but we'll get into that later. Fossils from Megalania have been recovered from rocks in southern Australia as far back as the 1800s, leading the infamous Sir Richard Owen to name it in 1859. New evidence has shown that the species actually survived until relatively more recent times than previously thought, dying out around 50,000 years ago, while they had first originated approximately 1.5 million years ago, playing a key role in the megafaunal assemblage of Pleistocene Australia. The fossil remains that have been found of this animal are not particularly complete, with a lot of the postcranial skeleton missing, however we can get a fairly decent idea of what Megalania probably looked like in life. Clearly, its overall physical features would have resembled the living monitor species it is closely related to, but on a larger scale. However, there are also many differences in the morphology of Megalania when compared to the extant monitors. For example, the humerus of Megalania is much wider towards the elbow joint than in other species of monitor lizard, and the animal also possessed a fairly pronounced crest-like structure on its skull. Although the modern-day Parenti has a comparable structure on its snout, the fossils of Megalania show that the crest in this animal was quite a bit larger. The teeth of Megalania were highly curved and extremely sharp, much like those of living varanids, with an interesting texture whereby the enamel is wrinkled, especially towards the base. Additionally, these animals possessed small bits of bone embedded in the skin, known as osteoderms, around their head and neck, another feature that appears in living members of the group. Now, the size of Megalania has been a bit of a controversial topic, with various estimates made over the years. Not having any relatively complete, full skeletons does make things more difficult, and so the animal must be scaled up using comparison with close relatives. The range of the estimates that have been proposed in the past is quite large, from 3 meters up to a ridiculous 11 meters. Some of the first size estimates calculated a length approaching 7 meters from head to tail, with a weight of over 600 kilograms. However, two of the most notable estimates are ones made in 2002 and in 2004. Paleontologists in 2002 calculated a much smaller total length, with an average of 3.5 meters and a maximum of 4.5 meters, accompanied by a maximum weight of around 330 kilograms. In a 2004 book, another paleontologist published more size estimates of Megalania, coming to a range of between 7 and 7.9 meters in length, depending on whether the animal's body proportions were closer to that of the lace monitor or the Komodo dragon. Still even more estimates have also placed the body length at between 5 and 6 meters. Therefore, thanks to the incompleteness of the fossils we have, it's not exactly clear what size Megalania could have reached, but it was definitely big, and most probably the biggest terrestrial lizard to have ever existed. So, knowing all this, what can we say about how Megalania is related to other organisms? Well, as I said before, clearly it was a varanid, but out of the living members of this group, what are its closest relatives? In the past, it was suggested that Megalania could be most closely related to the Parenti, which is currently the largest lizard to inhabit Australia. However, a more recent study has found good evidence for placing Megalania as the sister taxon to the modern-day Komodo dragon, due to similarities found in both animals' skulls, which would also unite all the giant Indo-Australian monitor lizard species together in a group. However, it's important to note that more complete fossil discoveries could always change what we know about the relationships of this animal in the future. This brings us to another key point to understand about Megalania. As I mentioned previously, Sir Richard Owen first named this animal in 1859, calling it Megalania prisca. However, there's good reason to actually consider this species as a member of the genus Varanus, the name that includes all the monitor lizard species alive today. In this case, Megalania would be known as Varanus priscus. However, we can still refer to the animal as Megalania, since this can be used as a non-scientific name. 
The reason that many scientists think that Megalania should be included within Varanus is because of how closely related the animal seems to be to other monitor lizard species, as I've just explained. Therefore, if it were for some reason classified in a different genus, it would make the Varanus genus a paraphyletic taxon, meaning it's not a natural grouping of taxa since it excludes certain members. So it's generally preferable to include Megalania as a part of Varanus, making it Varanus priscus. So then, what did the largest terrestrial lizard of all time feed on? Clearly Megalania would have had a predatory and scavenging lifestyle similar to the Komodo dragon, but to what extent? Well, the ancient reptile probably fed on large mammals just like the extant species today does, since fossilised remains of Megalania have been found near animals such as kangaroos. However, it also likely preyed on a range of small to large organisms. And Megalania also probably had a secret weapon to help in its predation, again just like the Komodo dragon does, venom. In the modern day dragon, there is a complex system of ducts between the teeth that deliver venom into the body of the animal the creature has its jaws around, though the way it utilises this substance is quite different to how other venomous reptiles such as snakes use it. In snakes, the venom is directly injected into the body of the prey through the fangs with a strong piercing bite, however Komodo dragons tend to have a much messier way of doing things. The dragons will bite down and then pull back on the flesh, causing lacerations that the venom secreted from the ducts between their teeth can then enter into. The venom is a kind of hematoxin, meaning it stops blood from clotting, so the prey end up bleeding out and becoming greatly weakened from blood loss. The skulls of Komodo dragons are very well suited to this method of predation too, as they're relatively lightweight and adapted for resisting high pulling forces, rather than applying large bite forces. Through comparison with the structure of the skull and teeth of Megalania, as well as comparison through phylogenetic bracketing with related varanids, scientists have suggested that this giant very likely had a similar predation mechanism, which would also make Megalania the biggest venomous vertebrate known to us. However, obviously this remarkable creature did eventually become extinct. But just what could have wiped out the largest lizard of all time? Well, a part of it might have been due to the usual culprit, humans. A 2015 study found that a particularly young deposit of Megalania fossils were actually about 50,000 years old, adding an extra 30,000 years onto the temporal range of the lizards, and also confirming that humans in Australia did indeed overlap in time with the species. Although not direct evidence of a human-made extinction, it does make it a possibility, despite there not actually being records of encounters between the two. Additionally, it turns out that Megalania would have been too slow to outrun a human, putting them at risk from attacks by our species, if these did indeed happen. However, humanity's role in the Australian megafaunal extinction is a particularly heavily debated and pretty controversial topic, and other means of extinction have been suggested for Megalania and the other animals that used to exist there, such as climate change. Hopefully more evidence for how this giant lizard disappeared will be discovered at some point. So that's Megalania, the biggest lizard and venomous vertebrate to have ever existed. It's undoubtedly a very unique and quite terrifying creature, and I hope you enjoyed learning about it. If you would like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.